We're at Lesson 10.2b, using dot plots to make inferences. Infer, that's a verb. We have two definitions. Number one is find out by reasoning, come to believe after thinking, conclude. Number two is be a sign or hint of, suggest indirectly, imply. Inference, that's a noun. The first definition is the process of inferring finding out by reasoning. The second definition is that which is inferred, a conclusion. My inference from the smoke was that something was burning. Back in sixth grade math, lesson 16.4, we learned to make and interpret dot plots. A dot plot is a visual display in which each piece of data is represented by a dot above a number line. For surveys, after obtaining a random sample of a population, we can make inferences about the population. Random samples are usually representative and support valid inferences. That means random samples usually represent and give meaning to conclusions that are true. I want you to know that qualitative means concerned with quality and quantitative means concerned with quantity. We can look at the beginning of the words to remember. It starts with quala, that's quality. It starts with quanta, that's quantity. Sarah asks students on the lunch line how many pets they have at home. She recorded the data as a list. The answers were two, three, one, five, one, one, two, zero, three, one. We make a dot plot for the pets this sample of students have at home. We can put them in order, or we could just put them in the list like this onto our dot plot by crossing them out as we mark them. We have a two, so we can cross off the two and put a dot for the two. We have a three, we put a dot for the three. We have a one, we put a dot for the one. We have a five, and so on. And the dot plot puts the data values in order. We've got from 0 to 5. So here's Sarah's dot plot of the children that were waiting in line for lunch, how many pets are at home. The number of dots we plotted relate to the number values of the data Sarah collected. Each dot represents one data value, one number, one answer. The qualitative inference, that's the inference that's concerned with quality. Most students have at least one pet at home. We can see one has the most dots. Most students have fewer than four pets at home. So if you look at our dot plot, most of the students answered in this area, which is less than four. Most students have between one and three pets at home. This area right here is most of the answers, so it's in between one and three. If Sarah increases the number of students she asks, the sample, it will improve the quality of her data. That means the more people she asks, the more accurate her answers will be to represent the student population. There's other information that we can get by looking at the dot plot. By counting the number of dots on the dot plot, we'll know how many students she surveyed. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dots. That means Sarah surveyed ten students. We can find the average number of pets. We add up all the data values. It's going to equal 19. There are ten data values because there's ten dots. We do 19 divided by 10 and we get one and nine tenths. Though most have one pet, the average, the mean, is one and nine-tenths pets at home. Now, you can't have one and nine-tenths pets, can you? There's not nine-tenths of a pet at someone's house. So we could round this off, really, and say that it averages about two pets per person. Even though there's more dots on the one, these two, three, and five answers raised the average up 
to be around 2. So for a quick review, the mean, that's the average, we divide the sum of the data values by the amount of data values. If our data values are 0, 1, 1, 3, and 5, we add them up, we get a 10. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data values. Remember, we include the 0 because that's one of the answers. So we're going to do 10 divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. That means the mean, the average, for these data values is 2. The median, we put the numbers in order from least to greatest, and the middle number is the median. Now, if there's an even amount of numbers, we find the average of the two middle numbers. We put them in order from least to greatest, and the middle value is going to be the median. If there are an even number, let's say there's a 17 here, so that we have two middle values. We add them together. 11 plus 13 is 24. We added two values together, so we're going to divide it by 2. That means our median is 12. When there's an odd number, we just choose the center number. When there's an even amount, we choose the two in the middle, and we find the average of those two. So that's mean and median. Now we're only human. We do make mistakes. When we have numerous values for a dot plot, it's helpful to cross them off as we make their dot. Look at all of these data values. It's easier to just say 7. We put our dot and cross it off. 2. We make our dot and cross it off until we make all of them. Then we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's 20 data values. We should have 20 dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep, we had 20 data values. We have 20 dots. It should be correct. We finished 10.2b. We're going to move on to 10.2c using box plots to make inferences. Do you remember box plots from sixth grade? Hopefully you remember a little bit about what we learned in sixth grade for box plots. Remember they had whiskers coming out on the side? We'll talk about it in the next lesson. Have a wonderful day. Keep trying your best, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.